Well, what can I do for you? If you're looking for a good weapon, let me show this to you. Take your basic blunt weapon, such as a mace. Works like a charm against most of those undying horrors down there. And there's nothing better to shatter skinny little skeletons. The axe? Aye, that's a good weapon. Balanced against any foe. Look how it cleaves the air. And then, imagine a nice fat demon head in its path. Keep in mind, however, that it is slow to swing. But talk about dealing a heavy blow. Look at that edge, that balance. A sword in the right hands. And against the right foe is the master of all weapons. Its keen blade finds little to hack or pierce on the undead. But against a living, breathing enemy, a sword will better slice their flesh. I made many of the weapons and most of the armor that King Leoric used to outfit his knights. I even crafted a huge two-handed sword of the finest mithril for him, as well as a field crown to match. I uh, still cannot believe how he died. But it must have been some sinister force that drove him insane. Demons stole Ogden's sign, you say. That doesn't sound much like the atrocities I've heard of or seen. Demons are concerned with ripping out your heart, not your signpost. Ah, oh, I was there when Lazarus led us into the labyrinth. He spoke of holy retribution. But when we started fighting those hellspawn, he did not so much as lift his mace against them. He just ran deeper into the dim, endless chambers that were filled with the servants of darkness. Pippin has told you the truth. We will need fresh water badly, and soon. I've tried to clear one of the smaller wells, but it reeks of stagnant filth. It must be getting clogged at the source. I've seen no such things in my shop, but I will keep a close watch for them. Perhaps if they come this way, they won't take kindly to the fires of my forge. I admit that I too have seen these strange lights, but I have not felt pulled towards them. I'll be sure to steer clear of them, and will tell everyone that visits here to do likewise. Ach, no, nothing of this place. But you may try asking Cain. He talks about many things, and it would not surprise me if he had some answers to your question. A bold tale indeed. My limited time beneath the cathedral leaves me purely equipped to offer you any help with this. But, as always, you'll find Cain well versed in legends and folklore. The Blade Azurath. Ugh, it's legend! It was cast by the angelic weaponsmith, Synodied, and tempered within the fires of judgment. Whoever wields this weapon will find the legions of hell at his feet. If you found this blade, I would begin to truly believe that you can end the nightmare that has befallen our town. I saw what Farnham calls the Butcher, as it swathed a path through the bodies of my friends. Ah, oh, he swung a cleaver as large as an axe, hewing limbs and cutting down brave men where they stood. I was separated from the fray by a host of small screeching demons, and somehow found the stairway leading out. I never saw that hideous beast again but his blood-stained visage haunts me to this day. When I found Wirt, he was very near a room that sounds like the vile pitch I've described. The stench of death was heavy in the air, and consumed as I was with getting the lad to safety, I did not go further than I had to. If he claims to know something of that place, I would not discount his word easily. I'm afraid that I've neither heard nor seen a place that matches your vivid description, my friend. Perhaps Cain the Storyteller could be of some help. If it is actually Lack Dannon that you've met, then I would advise that you aid him. I dealt with him on several occasions and found him to be honest and loyal in nature. The curse that fell upon the followers of King Leoric would fall especially hard upon him. The armor known as Valor could be what tips the scales in your favor. I'll tell you that many have looked for it, including myself. Arcane hid it well, my friend, and it'll take more than a bit of luck to unlock the secrets that have kept it concealed all oh, low these many years. Farnham speaks of a place that exists, at least in legend. Warriors would go to a place at the edge of hell to gird themselves for battle against the armies of darkness. If the stories are true, untold treasures could lie upon this island of the sunless sea. Ah, oh, you speak of an ancient and evil weapon. Tread lightly in this area, 
For the legends of Shadowfang are as black as a moonless winter night. Crafted within the Hellforge, Shadowfang can rend the very soul from whoever it strikes. Ah, oh, I do not envy you if it is in your mind to defeat the one who wields it. May light protect you, brave hero. Dark and wicked legend surrounds the one warlord of blood. Be well prepared, my friend, for he shows no mercy or quarter. A what? This is foolishness! There's no treasure buried here in Tristram! Let me see that. Uh, look, these drawings are inaccurate. They don't match our town at all! I'd keep my mind on what lies below the cathedral, and not what lies below our topsoil. If Adria doesn't have one of these, oh, you can bet that's a rare thing indeed. I can offer you no more help than that. But it sounds like a... Oh, a huge... Gargantuan, swollen, bloated mushroom! Well, good hunting, I suppose. I've never seen a map of this sort before. Where'd you get it? Ugh, although I have no idea how to read this, Cain or Adria may be able to provide the answers that you seek. Greetings! It's always a pleasure to see one of my best customers. I know that you've been venturing deeper into the labyrinth. And there's a story I was told that you may find worth the time to listen to. One of the men who returned from the labyrinth told me about a mystic anvil that he came across during his escape. His description reminded me of legends I had heard in my youth about the burning hellforge where powerful weapons of magic are crafted. The legend had it that deep within the hellforge rested the anvil of fury. This anvil contained within it the very essence of the demonic underworld. It is said that any weapon crafted upon the burning anvil is imbued with great power. If this anvil is indeed the anvil of fury, I may be able to make you a weapon capable of defeating even the darkest lord of hell. Find the anvil for me, and I'll get to work. Nothing yet, eh? Well, keep searching. A weapon forged upon the anvil could be your best hope. And I'm sure that I can make you one of legendary proportions. Oh, I can hardly believe it. This is the Anvil of Fury. Good work, my friend. Now, we'll show those bastards that there are no weapons in hell more deadly than those made by men. Take this, and may light protect you. Stay for a moment. I have a story you might find interesting. A caravan that was bound for the Eastern Kingdoms passed through here some time ago. It was supposedly carrying a piece of the heavens that had fallen to earth. The caravan was ambushed by cloaked riders just north of here along the roadway. I searched the wreckage for this sky rock, but it was nowhere to be found. If you should find it, I believe that I can fashion something useful from it. I'm still waiting for you to bring me that stone from the heavens. I know that I can make something powerful out of it. Let me see that. Aye, aye, it is as I believed. Give me a moment. Ah, here you are. I arranged pieces of the stone within a silver ring that my father left me. Ah, oh, I hope it serves you well. Oh, I'm in luck. A caravan has stopped just outside the village and has taken supplies to the lands of the east. Certain items will bring a special price, if you can get them for me. We can both turn a nice profit if you can deliver the right goods to me. What do you say? Ah, oh, you're just in time. The caravan is leaving tonight. Here is your cut, friend. I believe that I may have found a way to greatly improve some weapons. If you can bring me what I need, I'd be willing to try out my idea. And if it works, it's yours. Ah, I still think I can improve the right weapon. Let me just do this, and this, and this. Ah, it works. Take this back and give it a try. I'm working on a method for strengthening armor. Unfortunately, I don't have what I need just now. If you could possibly bring me what I require, the first one is yours. I still think I can strengthen the right armor. You know what you need to bring me. Good find! See if this works any better for you. If you come across any enchanted equipment, well, I could try to learn how it was crafted, and then use those methods for my own creations. I should probably start with something easy. I still think that I can strip the knowledge of enchantments. If... You bring me a certain item. Thank you, oh great and mighty customer, a uh, uh, champion. This will take some study. Done. Keep your eyes open for a figurine made of iron. 
I have uncovered some old records concerning a specific type of figurine and the secrets of metal crafting that it holds. I know that the right figurine could be quite powerful. If you see what I'm looking for, get it and bring it to me straight away. Oh, the secrets of this metal are fantastic. Oh, how I could make the right item gleam with power. If you deliver to me the right item so I can combine it with this metal, I could craft something worthy of the warriors of heaven. Your efforts are not in vain. It seems that all is as I had hoped. I trust you will find this useful in your battles below. Your weapons and armor will show the signs of your struggles against the darkness. If you bring them to me, with a bit of work and a hot forge, I can restore them to top fighting form. While I have to practically smuggle in the metals and tools I need from caravans that skirt the edges of our damned town, that witch Adria always seems to get whatever she needs. If I knew even the smallest bit about how to harness magic as she did, I could make some truly incredible things. Oh, Jillian is a nice lass. Shame that her gamma is in such poor health, or I would arrange to get both of them out of here on one of the train caravans. Oh, sometimes I think that Cain talks too much, but I guess that's his calling in life. If I could bend steel as well as he can bend your ear, Oh, I could make a suit of court plate good enough for an emperor. I was with Fern on that night that Lazarus led us into the labyrinth. I never saw the archbishop again, and I may not have survived if Farnham was not at my side. I fear that the attack left his soul as crippled as, well, another did my leg. Oh, I cannot fight this battle for him now. But oh, what if I could? A good man who puts the needs of others above his own. You won't find anyone left in Tristram or anyone else for that matter, who has a bad thing to say about the healer. The priest, Tremaine, ah, he's a solitary fellow who has no time for most of us. He seems to prefer the company of Pippin or Cain, and that's fine by me. I respect his passion and his commitment to his order, but I've no time for his prattling. That lad is going to get himself into serious trouble, or I guess I should say, again. I've tried to interest him in working here and learning an honest trade, but he prefers the high profits of dealing in goods of dubious origin. I cannot hold that against him after what happened to him, but I do wish he would at least be careful. The innkeeper has little business and no real way of turning a profit. He manages to make ends meet by providing food and lodging for those who occasionally drift through the village, but they're as likely to sneak off into the night as they are to pay him. If it weren't for the stores of grains and dried meats he kept in his cellar, why most of us would have starved during that first year when the entire countryside was overrun by demons. So, you're the hero everyone's been talking about. Perhaps you could help a poor, simple farmer out of a terrible mess? At the edge of my orchard, well, just south of here, there's a horrible thing swelling out of the ground. I can't get to my crops or my bales of hay, and my poor cows will starve. The witch gave this to me and said that it would blast that thing out of my field. If you could destroy it, I would be forever grateful. i do it myself, but someone has to stay here with the cows. I knew that it couldn't be as simple as that witch made it sound. It's a sad world when you can't even trust your neighbors. Oh, such a trouble I have. Well, maybe... No, I, I couldn't impose on you, what with all the other troubles. Maybe after you've cleansed the church of some of those creatures, you could come back and spare a little time to help a poor farmer? Is it gone? Did you send it back to the dark recesses of Hades that spawned it? You what? Oh, don't tell me you lost it. Those things don't come cheap, you know. You've got to find it, and then blast that horror out of our town. I heard the explosion from here. Many thanks to you, kind stranger. What with all these things coming out of the ground, monsters taking over the church and so forth, these are trying times. I'm but a poor farmer, but here... Take this with my great thanks.
Oh, I could use your help, but perhaps after you've saved the catacombs from the desecration of those beasts. I need something done, but I couldn't impose on a perfect stranger. Perhaps after you've been here a while, I might feel more comfortable asking a favor. I see in you the potential for greatness. Perhaps sometime while you are fulfilling your destiny, you could stop by and do a little favor for me? I think you could probably help me, but perhaps after you've gotten a little more powerful. I wouldn't want to injure the village's only chance to destroy the menace in the church. Greetings, good master. Welcome to the Tavern of the Rising Sun. Many adventurers have graced the tables of my tavern, and ten times as many stories have been told over as much ale. The only thing that I ever heard any of them agree on was this old axiom. Perhaps it will help you. You can cut the flesh, but you must crush the bone. Lazarus was the archbishop who led many of the townspeople into the labyrinth. I lost many good friends that day, and Lazarus never returned. I suppose he was killed along with most of the others. If you would do me a favor, good master, please do not talk to Farnham about that day. I have always tried to keep a large supply of foodstuffs and drink in our storage cellar, but with the entire town having no source of fresh water, even our stores will soon run dry. Please do what you can, or I don't know what we will do. That sounds quite disgusting, and I am afraid that I haven't heard anything about any worms. Perhaps Cain, the storyteller, could be of some help. Jillian has been going on and on about strange lights in the trees but I haven't been able to make heads nor tails of a story. I certainly haven't seen any strange lights, and if I did, they would be the least of my worries. I am afraid that I don't know anything about that, good master. Cain has many books that may be of some help. These sound like dark creatures indeed. I am ignorant in matters of this nature, but I would assume that our storyteller may know of such legends. There is an old story of an angel named Iswal. But I don't remember much more than that. Yes, Farnham has mumbled something about a hulking brute who wielded a fierce weapon. I believe he called him a butcher. Wirt is talking backwards again? Oh, I hate it when he does that. I don't have time to help you decipher his riddle, but I will tell you one thing. Don't get involved with that rapscallion. I never much cared for poetry. Occasionally I had calls to hire minstrels when the inn was doing well, but that seems like such a long time ago now. What? Uh, oh, yes, uh, well... I suppose you could see what someone else knows. You speak of a brave warrior long dead. I'll have no such talk of speaking with departed souls in my inn-yard, thank you very much. Don't you think that Griswold would be a better person to ask about this? He's quite handy, you know. Every child hears the story of the warrior Arcane and his mystic armor known as Valor. If you could find its resting place, you would be well protected against the evil in the labyrinth. You know, sometimes I wonder how much faith you can put into what Farnham says. He spends so much time reliving his memories of the labyrinth and just being plain drunk that he doesn't always make much sense. I guess you could ask around, though. I saw the exorcism. It was incredible how Tremaine drove the evil spirit from that man's racked and tortured body. I pray that something that horrific never happens to anyone here ever again. I am afraid that I haven't heard anything about such a vicious warrior, good master. I hope that you do not have to fight him, for he sounds extremely dangerous. I'll bet that Wirt saw you coming and put on an act just so he could laugh at you later when you're running around the town with your nose in the dirt. I'd ignore it. The caravan stopped here to take on some supplies for their journey to the east. I sold them quite an array of fresh fruits and some excellent sweetbreads that Garda had just finished baking. Shame what happened to them. Let me just say this. Both Garda and I would never, ever serve black mushrooms to our honored guests. If Adria wants some mushrooms in her stew, then that is her business. But I can't help you find any. Black mushrooms. Disgusting. If the witch can't help you and suggests that you see Cain, what makes you think that I would know anything? It sounds like this is a very serious matter. You should hurry along and see the storyteller, as Adria suggests. The village needs your help, good master. Some months ago, King Leoric's son, Prince Albrecht, was kidnapped. The king went into a rage and scoured the village for his missing child. With each passing day, Leoric seemed to slip deeper into madness. He sought to blame innocent townsfolk for the boy's disappearance and had them brutally executed. Less than half of us survived his insanity. The king's knights and priests tried to placate him, but he turned against them and, sadly, they were forced to kill him. With his dying breath, the king called down a terrible curse upon his former followers. 
he vowed that they would serve him in darkness forever. This is where things take an even darker twist than I thought possible. Our former king has risen from his eternal sleep and now commands a legion of undead minions within the labyrinth. His body was buried in a tomb three levels beneath the cathedral. Please, good master, put his soul at ease by destroying his now cursed form. As I told you, good master, the king was entombed three levels below. He's down there, waiting in the putrid darkness for his chance to destroy this land. The curse of our king is past, but I fear that it was only part of a greater evil at work. However, we may yet be saved from the darkness that consumes our land, for your victory is a good omen. May light guide you on your way, good master. Master, I have a strange experience to relate. I know that you have a great knowledge of those monstrosities that inhabit the labyrinth, and this is something that I cannot understand for the very life of me. I was awakened during the night by a scraping sound just outside of my tavern. When I looked out from my bedroom, I saw the shapes of small, demon-like creatures in the inn-yard. After a short time they ran off, but not before stealing the sign to my inn. I don't know why the demons would steal my sign, but leave my family in peace. Tis strange, no? Oh, we didn't have to bring back my sign, but I suppose that it does save me the expense of having another one made. Well, let me see. What could I give you as a fee for finding it? Hmm, what have we here? Oh, yes. This cap was left in one of the rooms by a magician who stayed here some time ago. Perhaps it may be of some value to you. Your brave tales of fighting demons have reminded me of something, good master. A traveller passed through here some time ago. He was quite proud of a very unique weapon he held, and while becoming quite drunk, boasted of its power. I never saw him again, and I suspect that he ventured too close to the cathedral. Have you ever seen that traveller I told you about? The one with the enchanted weapon? Well, I suppose that he left our village as so many others have. Or he must be dead. Yes, that is certainly the weapon that he wore. You know, I've been thinking about something else that Traveller said. He inferred that the true powers of the weapon would be unleashed only when it tasted the blood of a very specific kind of creature. Were the stories the Traveller told us true? Oh, I see you don't know yet. Well, I clearly recall that he said by slaying a certain monster, the weapon you found would become something quite special. While I understand that your purpose may be of a higher calling, surely some well-earned gold would be welcomed. Some townspeople from a nearby village have offered a reward for the destruction of a creature that raised their homes and property. They demand positive proof that the creature has been slain, and I can only think of one way to do that. You can say whatever you want, but without proof, I cannot give you the reward. Oh, disgusting, but certainly proof enough for anyone. Here's your reward, as promised. Good master, a moment of your time, please. Uh, my tavern was broken into during the night. No one was hurt, but many items were stolen, including a chest belonging to a mysterious wanderer who once stayed here. I found the body of a thief near the cathedral with telltale wounds from one of the creatures below marking his broken body. Some of the stolen goods were near the body, but the chest and the key to open it were nowhere in sight. If you should find those keys while on your brave crusade, you should recover them. Then, if you find the chest, you can open it and see what secrets it contains. Perhaps it will be something that can help you on your quests. Remember, good master, the chest is locked and is useless without the key. If you do find the chest and get the key, you should see what's inside. I don't expect the owner back here again. I see that you have found the key. Now you just need to find the chest that it belongs to. Griswold the blacksmith is extremely knowledgeable about weapons and armor. If you ever need work done on your gear, he is definitely the man to see. Farnham spends far too much time here drowning his sorrows in cheap ale. I would make him leave, but he did suffer so during his time in the labyrinth. Adria is wise beyond her years, but I must admit, she frightens me a little. Well, no matter. If you ever have need to trade in items of sorcery, she maintains a strangely well-stocked hut just across the river. If you want to know more about the history of our village, the storyteller Kane knows quite a bit about the past. The priest Tremaine is a bit of a mystery. He certainly never stays here, and he often comes and goes to many of the nearby towns. Wirt is a rapscallion and a little scoundrel. He was always getting into trouble, and it's no surprise what happened to him. He probably went fooling about someplace that he shouldn't have been. I feel sorry for the boy, but I don't abide the company that he keeps. Pepin is a good man, and certainly the most generous in the village. He's always attending to the needs of others, but trouble of some sort or another does seem to follow him wherever he goes. Gillian, my barmaid? If it were not for her sense of duty to her granddam, she would have fled from here long ago. 
Goodness knows I begged her to leave, telling her that I would watch after the old woman, but she is too sweet and caring to have done so. Thank goodness you've returned. Much has changed since you lived here, my friend. All was peaceful until the Dark Riders came and destroyed our village. Many were cut down where they stood, and those who took up arms were slain or, or dragged away to become slaves, or worse. The church at the edge of town has been desecrated and is being used for dark rituals. The screams that echo in the night are inhuman, but some of our townsfolk may yet survive. Follow the path that lies between my tavern and the blacksmith's shop to find the church and save who you can. Perhaps I can tell you more if we speak again. Good luck. What ails you, my friend? I have made a very interesting discovery. Unlike us, the creatures in the labyrinth can heal themselves without the aid of potions or magic. If you hurt one of the monsters, make sure it is dead, or it very well may regenerate itself. Before it was taken over by, well, whatever looks below, the cathedral was a place of great learning. There are many books to be found there. If you find any, you should read them all, for some may hold secrets to the workings of the labyrinth. The loss of his son was too much for King Leoric. I did what I could to ease his madness, but in the end, it overcame him. A black curse has hung over this kingdom from that day forward. But perhaps, if you were to free his spirit from his earthly prison, the curse would be lifted. My goodness, demons running about the village at night, pillaging our homes, is nothing sacred? I hope that Ogden and Garda are all right. I suppose that they would come to see me if they were hurt. I was shocked when I heard of what the townspeople were planning to do that night. I thought that of all people, Lazarus would have had more sense than that. He was an archbishop and always seemed to care so much for the townsfolk of Tristram. So many were injured, I could not save them all. Roof and Aeneas are missing? Light protect us! Is there no place that is safe? Our only hope of returning to a peaceful life rests in you. Please, you must find those boys and bring them home to their family. This sounds like a very dangerous place. If you venture there, please take great care. Horizon was insane. There are forces with which one does not interfere. It would not surprise me if you found only the charred remains of this damned fool. Farnham is often confused, but he speaks a powerful name when the word Iswal passes his lips. Cain would be able to tell you in much greater detail the legend of this warrior. By the light I know of this vile demon. There were many that bore the scars of his wrath upon their bodies when the few survivors of the charge led by Lazarus crawled from the cathedral. I don't know what he used to slice open his victims, but it could not have been of this world. It left wounds festering with disease, and even I found them almost impossible to treat. Beware if you plan to battle this fiend. I suppose it isn't beyond the realm of possibility if you could bear being in that room again. Your description of the atrocities committed there would be enough to keep me far from it. This does seem familiar somehow. I seem to recall reading something very much like that poem while researching the history of demonic afflictions. It spoke of a place of great evil that... Wait, you're not going there, are you? A golden elixir, you say? I have never concocted a potion of that color before, so I can't tell you how it would affect you if you were to try to drink it. As your healer, I strongly advise that should you find such an elixir, do as Lockdonan asks and do not try to use it. If you had been looking for information on the pestle of curing or the silver chalice of purification, I could have assisted you, my friend. However, in this matter, you would be better served to speak to either Griswold or Cain. Hmm... It sounds like something I should remember, but I've been so busy learning new cures and creating better elixirs that I must have forgotten. Sorry, for once I can vouch for Farnham's extraordinary claim. There are many mentions in the books that I've been reading about a place of great healing where warriors of light would go to mend the wounds sustained in the Sin War. If you could find this place, it would most assuredly be to the benefit of us all. I was asked to assist in the exorcism. My skills were able to ease the poor man's suffering as Tremaine drove the demon from his body. While I was treating him for an exceptionally high fever, he spoke of a place of searing heat. 
the tortured fellow cried out about hell and falling into a pit of flame. I could not make any sense of it, and thankfully he soon recovered. Kane would be able to tell you much more about something like this than I would ever wish to know. I really don't have time to discuss some map you are looking for. I have many sick people that require my help, and yours as well. I don't know what it is they thought they could see with that rock, but I will say this. If rocks are falling from the sky, you would better be careful. I can't make much of the writing on this map, but perhaps Adria or Kane could help you decipher what this refers to. I can see that it is a map of the stars in our sky, but any more than that is beyond my talents. I'm glad I caught up to you in time. Our wells have become brackish and stagnant, and some of the townspeople have become ill drinking from them. Our reserves of fresh water are quickly running dry. I believe that there is a passage that leads to the springs that serve our town. Please find what has caused this calamity, or we all will surely perish. Please, you must hurry. Every hour that passes brings us closer to having no water to drink. We cannot survive for long without your help. What's that you say? The mere presence of the demons has caused the water to become tainted? Oh, truly a great evil lurks beneath our town. But your perseverance and courage gives us hope. Please, take this ring. Perhaps it will aid you in the destruction of such vile creatures. Good hero, a moment of your time, please. While attending one of the townsfolk who had taken quite ill, I noticed something odd about his home. There were strange sounds and a sickly sweet smell rising from the cellar. Thinking perhaps these fumes had something to do with his sickness, I investigated. In his cellar were monstrous worms shifting and squirming up from the underground. I beg of you, slay these creatures before they can make their way into the town. I left the door to his house open for you. It is the one opposite of mine. I fear that the worms could soon overrun the village. I know that they are coming up from under the house that is opposite mine. Just the thought of those slimy beasts oozing into my house makes me want to be ill. Please, rid us of them. Once again you have saved this humble town from the encroaching evil. We are, as always, forever in your debt. The witch told me that you were searching for the brain of a demon to assist me in creating my elixir. It should be of great value to the many who were injured by those foul beasts. If I can just unlock the secrets, I suspect that its alchemy holds. If you can remove the brain of a demon when you kill it, I would be grateful if you could bring it to me. Excellent! This is just what I had in mind. I was able to finish the elixir without this, but it can't hurt to have this to study. Would you please carry this to the witch? I believe that she is expecting it. My friend, I must speak with you. While going to help a sick villager, I came upon a demon in the town. I fled from the house and accidentally left the door open in my haste. I pray that the vile creature is still in there. Please, help us before it comes for us all. These creatures must be banished from our town. To my shame, I left the door open, but that should make it all the easier for you to find the house. Once again, the town is in your debt. It is only your strength and force of will that can lead us out of this evil time. Once again, I require your strong arm and quick wits to aid the people of this town. I am in need of certain reagents to help fight the plagues that the demons have unleashed on the land by their very presence. If you could gather these few items, it will save many lives. The disease has spread quickly and many are dying. Please, help me by finding the reagents so that I can use them to make an antidote. Thank you so much. You bring hope and light to these dark and troubled times. I wish for you to have this in the hopes that it will aid you in your battle against the darkness. I know that I ask much of you, but I must now ask that you find a pool of clear water. Take these containers, fill them, and return them to me as soon as you can. With the clear water, I can create an elixir of wondrous power that will benefit us all. Have you brought what I need? The clear water will allow me to create a very powerful elixir. Fill the containers that I gave you and return with them. Very good, my friend. Very good. Just give me a minute to mix these ingredients. Perfect. 
Here is some of the elixir as promised. Griswold knows as much about the art of war as I do about the art of healing. He is a shrewd merchant, but his work is second to none. Oh, I suppose that may be because he's the only blacksmith left here. Cain is a true friend and a wise sage. He maintains a vast library and has an innate ability to discern the true nature of many things. If you ever have any questions, he is the person to go to. Even my skills have been unable to fully heal Farnham. Oh, I have been able to mend his body, but his mind and spirit are beyond anything I can do. While I use some limited forms of magic to create the potions and elixirs I store here, Adria is a true sorceress. She never seems to sleep, and she always has access to many mystic tomes and artifacts. I believe her hut may be much more than the hovel it appears to be, but I can never seem to get inside the place. His Holiness is a wondrous man of great knowledge and understanding. He has shown me many cures for rare and deadly diseases. He brings me books and reagents for my work whenever he can, but I fear that he may some day take on some task that is too great even for him. Poor Wirt. I did all that was possible for the child, but I know he despises that wooden peg that I was forced to attach to his leg. His wounds were hideous. No one, and especially such a young child, should have to suffer the way he did. I really don't understand why Ogden stays here in Tristram. He suffers from a slight nervous condition, but he is an intelligent and industrious man who would do very well wherever he went. I suppose it may be the fear of the many murders that happen in the surrounding countryside, or perhaps the wishes of his wife that keep him and his family where they are. Ogden's barmaid is a sweet girl. Her grandmother is quite ill and suffers from delusions. She claims that they are visions, but I have no proof of that one way or the other. Psst! Over here! Not everyone in Tristram has a use, or a market, for everything you'll find in the labyrinth. Not even me, as hard as that is to believe. Sometimes only you will be able to find a purpose for some things. Look, I am running a business here. I don't sell information, and I don't care about some king that's been dead longer than I've been alive. If you need something to use against this king of the undead, then I can help you out. What? Is he saying I took that? I suppose that Griswold is on his side too. Look, I got over simple sign stealing months ago. You can't turn a profit on a piece of wood. Yes, the righteous Lazarus, who is so effective against those monsters down there, didn't help save my leg, did it? Look, I'll give you a free piece of advice. Ask Farnham. He was there. For once, I'm with you. My business runs dry, so to speak, if I have no market to sell to. You better find out what is going on, and soon. <laughs> they have you hunting worms now? What's next? Leaf collecting? Picking up mushrooms? Look, friend, you have a whole church full of demons over there to worry about. I don't see how a few little worms could be so bad. You know, I've been looking for those lights, but I can't find them. If Jillian says they are there, I believe her. But I have yet to see them for myself. Mm, a vast and mysterious treasure, you say? Hmm, maybe I could be interested in picking up a few things from you. Or better yet, don't you need some rare and expensive supplies to get you through this ordeal? The care and feeding of demons is definitely not an interest of mine. Here is a piece of friendly advice. If you get the chance, kill anything you see down there. If you were to find any trace of Iswal or the Blade Azurath, even I would be impressed. That is definitely one of a kind. I know more than you think about that grizzly fiend. His little friends got a hold of me and managed to get my leg before Griswold pulled me out of that hole. I'll put it bluntly. Kill him before he kills you and adds your corpse to his collection. Let's see. Am I selling you something? No. Are you giving me money to tell you about this? No. Are you now leaving and going to talk to the storyteller who lives for this kind of thing? Yes. Wait, let me guess. Cain was swallowed up in a gigantic fissure that opened beneath him. He was incinerated in a ball of hellfire and can't answer your questions anymore. Oh, that isn't what happened? 
Then I guess you'll be buying something, or you'll be on your way. If you were to find this artifact for Griswold, it could put a serious damper on my business here. Ah, uh, you'll never find it. You intend to find the armor known as Valor? No one has ever figured out where Arcane stashed the stuff. And if my contacts couldn't find it, I seriously doubt you ever will either. This is one time that you should listen to Farnham. I have heard of this place, and I know a few sorcerers who have tried to create a portal to get there. I don't know who this flesh doom is, but I have heard rumors of an ebon blade that cleaves a soul from the body. Even I would not try to sell that thing, no matter what the profit. If you find it, you should do as Tremaine says and destroy it as quickly as possible. I haven't ever dealt with this warlord you speak of, but he sounds like he's going through a lot of swords. Wouldn't mind supplying his armies. If anyone can make something out of that rock, Griswold can. He knows what he is doing. And as much as I try to steal his customers, I respect the quality of his work. I don't have any mushrooms of any size or color for sale. How about something a bit more useful? I've been looking for a map, but that certainly isn't it. You should show that to Adria. She can probably tell you what it is. I'll say one thing. It looks old, and old usually means valuable. Here over, psst. Chamber Butcher, the From Spell Portal Town, the cast. Saying, am I what see? Yet out it figured you haven't? Understand, could you even so simple it make to try I? Chamber Butcher, the From Spell Portal Town, the cast. Hmm, where is that stupid map? It was supposed to be between the rock and the tree before the bridge. It should be right here. Oh, hello there. Didn't, uh, see you standing there. Rock, tree, bridge, uh, I have no idea what you're talking about. Look, I know my prices are high, but one of my contacts had an accident, and I need some help refilling my more mundane inventory. I'll trade you a quality item, if you can just complete this little list for me. Listen, I'll make it worth your time if you will get me what I asked you for. Besides, you know you want to find out what I'm going to give you in return. Thanks. This should hold me over until I can find a new errand boy. Too bad you're so busy. Oh yeah, here's your part of the bargain. Psst, over here. I have something very special for sale today. I'm not exactly sure what it is, but I can just tell that it's great. I'm going to offer you a bargain. A thousand gold takes it. Right now, no questions and no returns. Hey, you. Yeah, I'm talking to you. I acquired this strange book. I know it must do something big, but you need a crystal eyepiece to read it, so it's useless to me. However, I would be willing to trade you this rare and mystical tome uh, for just a few things. Look, this very special book that I have can be yours for so little. Don't tell anyone what a great deal I'm giving you or it would ruin my reputation. Amazing! You actually found everything I wanted. Well, here's the book, but you're going to have to find a crystal eyepiece to read it. Good luck! Don't trust everything the drunk says. Too many ales have fogged his vision and his good sense. In case you haven't noticed, I don't buy anything from Tristram. I am an importer of quality goods. If you want to peddle your junk, You'll have to see Griswold, Pepin, or that witch Adria. I'm sure they'll snap up whatever you can bring them. I guess I owe the blacksmith my life. What there is of it. Sure, Griswold offered me an apprenticeship at the smithy. Eh, he's a nice enough guy, but I'll never get enough money to... Well, let's just say that I have definite plans that require a large amount of gold. If I were a few years older, I would shower her with whatever riches I could muster. And let me assure you, I can get my hands on some very nice stuff. Jillian is a beautiful girl who should get out of Tristram as soon as it is safe. Hmm, maybe I'll take her with me when I go. Kane knows too much. He scares the life out of me, even more than that woman across the river. He keeps telling me about how lucky I am to be alive and how my story is foretold in legend. I think he's off his crock. Farnham. Now there is a man with serious problems, and I know all about how serious problems can be. He trusted too much in the integrity of one man, and Lazarus led him into the very jaws of death.
Oh, I know what it's like down there, so don't even start telling me about your plans to destroy the evil that dwells in that labyrinth. <laughs> Just watch your legs. As long as you don't need anything reattached, old Pepin is as good as they come. If I'd have had some of those potions he brews, uh, I might still have my leg. Yeah, Tremaine. He gets around, doesn't he? Or haven't you heard? My friends in some of the other towns say that he passes through, picking up a few books here, a pinch of bat claw there. Never seems to have the problems most do getting in and out of Tristram, that's for sure. Adria truly bothers me. Sure, Kane is creepy in what he can tell you about the past, but that witch can see into your past. She always has some way to get whatever she needs, too. Adria gets her hands on more merchandise than I've seen pass through the gates of the King's Bazaar during High Festival. Ogden is a fool for staying here. I could get him out of town for a very reasonable price, but he insists on trying to make a go of it with that stupid tavern. I guess at the least he gives Jillian a place to work, and his wife Garda does make a superb shepherd's pie.